What's good, beloved? Welcome to an all new episode of Vino Noir. Why do we call it Vino Noir? Because it is Noir's. That's a Vino. Drinking Vino. Indeed. Drinking Vino. And we're here to remind you that always get 22s, because 22s are better. We ride, we ride, 22s are better. Uh, we ride. If, guys, all I'm saying is that if you can afford to put 22s on the whip, put 22s on the whip. Okay. Tools. Yes. In the bottles. I've got some 18s right now, and yeah. I look at them sideways. I'm sitting on 17s. Where? I'm sitting on seven on the yeah. benzo. I'm sitting on seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on, on the coupe, I'm sitting yeah. on eighteen. Yeah. But one day, if you can get twenty twos on the whip, you got the money. Twenty twos are better. Get twenty twos. You right. Anyway, tools. You ever been at the bottle store and wonder why bottle shapes are the way that they are? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. At the bottle store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why would it be that a red is in the shape, a nice sort of white is in the shape? What, what, what's behind that whole logic? Believe it or not, there's a little bit of science behind Ibotil. Mm. And mm. effectively what we're going to try to do today is we're not going to be the definitive guide to Ibotil, but we are going to try to give a little bit of understanding as to why is it the way it is. But also in the same token, can you get those guys from 2005 to bring us back Ibotil as they owe us? You know what I'm talking about. Not Pala. Pakla way about the day. Mm. And, and the month. month. And the month. Mm. And the place. Mm. But like but now. But we still now I'm gonna mix up and extend. I'm gonna mix I'm gonna mix my jack. I'm gonna mix my dog. Uh, anyway. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna speak to us this whole thing, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so when I buy reds, traditionally this is the kind of thing that I see, this kind of shape of the bottle. Indeed. So basically if you really want to go down this route, there are lots of different possible ones, mm -hmm. but you really kind of have to focus on about six. Mm -hmm. For today, we're just going to focus on four. Um, because the other ones are a little bit alternative. So the first one is this one over here. Yeah. This style over here is what we call a Bordeaux bottle. Sure. It's um, typically defined by a couple of characteristics. One, it's fairly slender. Uh, number two, a high shoulder sure. as well. And number three, the bottle in itself tends to be tinges of green. The green in itself, what it does is that it protects the wine from the sunlight. Yes. So almost, as long, almost like olive oil in a sense. Right? Exactly like that. Okay. Right. Cool. So that it doesn't over age it, it doesn't over oxidize it, um, and it kind of protects it where is it that it sits. Mm. Um, also, you will tend to find wines that are uh, more Bordeauxy. So your Cabernets, your Merlots, Cap Franc, they would sit mm -hmm. in this type of bottle over here. So tools, why the slanted shoulders? You, you call them slanted shoulders, shoulders earlier on. Why, why this? What, what's the preservation of this? So what's okay. the idea behind this? So basically, each region likes to define itself through certain characteristics. Um, and bottle shape is one of them. Yeah. So like the other one was Bur uh, Bordeaux. This over here is Burgundy. Yeah. The Burgundy bottle is defined a little bit by more of a slanted shoulder. And this is where you would find things like Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, um, the wines that tend to be a little bit lighter. And the typical color of this over here tends to be a little bit tinted, but also it's not weird to find it in something that is uh, more clear. Okay, yeah. For me, the most intriguing bottle of the moon, mm. the Shaza. Yeah, it's Shampopolopolopo, Shampopolop. Eh, so it's over the name. Spagalala, eh, 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 Okay. Hey, 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 Fucking hell. For fucking sake, so. Pass out on your mate's couch. I didn't say You're so old, bro. Is there something wrong? Don't say that. Don't say that, brother. <laughs> okay. Spagalala. It's Spagalala, dog. Right. A sparkling wine bottle. Um, basically, what you're going to find over here is that it's going to be thicker, it's going to be denser. Ah, much denser, yeah. Because of the fact that it's got to hold so much pressure inside of the bottle that if it took something that was a little bit lighter of the other ones it would never be able yeah. to hold all of the pressure when we say pressure in this sense we mean the acid the bubbles the, the, the combination the combination that's okay. created through the fermentation sure. okay right okay, okay. and also then what you need to do is that this typically has a punt in it this bottom 
part over here mm. where people like to stick their thumb in mm. um, and that's intended to create a bigger surface area so that the glass is thicker and stronger than what is uh, otherwise typical yeah but to talk about bubbles and the density of the bottle and how glamorous but you know how it is when you finish a, a shampoo bottle and you gotta throw the bottle away it's yeah. like ah oh, that was uh, nice uh, man that was right. nice you know what i mean Almost like when you have a good red or white, there's a big punch at the bottom, bottom of the bottle. Does that equate to quality or not? I think that what happens is that every brand, every label, every house tries to make their wines a little bit more distinguishable yeah. than the last. And so that you use any parts and components to be able to make people remember you. It's not necessary for still wines to have a deep punt, yeah. but it's become a vanity thing because it now becomes a lot more expensive to make a bottle that has got a punt in it than it would be typically to is it, make is it safe, sorry, sorry, Is it safe for me to assume that if you spent money on the bottle, you spent wine, money on the juice? Woo! That's, I that's don't, don't oh. want to be controversial. That's a do. Oh. Or anything like that. That's but a is it a safe assumption to make or is it not? That's a gigantic call. Look, there are a couple of things that give you a good indication of whether or not um, a bottle of wine is expensive or not expensive but good right so normally if the juice inside of the bottle is not great you're not going to spend a lot of money outside of the package yes. you just have to try to justify it makes good sense so if you find that labels or houses are spending a little bit more on the bottle you know instead of putting a screw top on which is a little bit more efficient cost wise yeah. they'll go ahead and seal and put on a cork Shop. instead of giving us thin flaky bottles they'll create something bigger and denser. Instead of giving us a flat punt, they'll give us a full deep punt. All those little efforts are probably akin to what the fashion labels do in order to be able to distinguish themselves from the rest by just going a little bit extra, a little bit extra, a mm. little bit extra. You know, when it comes to wine sizes, I guess 750 is the standard, right? Mm. But you also get like, you know, like a, a massive ass like bottle of Four Cousins or whatever, mm. or you get like a pub sack. Not that I know anything about that. We would never know anything about that because we didn't study at Rhodes University. Yes. Rhodes? Rhodes. Check your purple privilege. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting tidbit. Do you know yeah. why wine, bottles of wine are 750 more? Yep. Yeah. Generally speaking, right, like all things, um, there was a very um, laborious way of making glass. And glass blowers used to put their mouths on the top. Yep. And blow. I encourage. Right? All of us. Indeed. A mouth, a mouth on the top. I can already see I'm, Jess shaking her head. But I, somehow, <laughs> I know this will make it to the final edit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Jules. Uh, yes. Um, oh, and because of the fact that they used to make all of these bottles by hand, yeah. the general average land capacity is 750 mils. Mm. So it's really dictated by how much the average person can blow to be able to make an open vessel. Tools, whether it's in 750 mils, whether it's in a pap sack, whether it's in a can, this thing should be consumed by everyone who's got an interest in it and anyone who has like, you know, a liking for it, right? Look, man, I don't know how, and I don't care how is it that you choose to consume your wine. And also, all I need you to do is make sure that it's a South African. And with that, as you sit and you sip, know every day that it is indeed BX. Ah, ah, ah! If you don't like and subscribe, if you know, you know.